So a while ago, my buddy Joel, AKA 3D Printing Nerd, passed along a printer to me, which was pretty cool, right? It's the GTech A10M, as you've probably already seen from the title of this video. So GTech got a hold of me a while back and said, hey, do you want to make a video about the machine of ours that you have? And I figured, sure, why not? It's not a paid endorsement. I do have their machine. Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what I thought of it from an enthusiast point, not from like a super heavy 3D printing god or something, because that's not me whatsoever. <laughs> There's a lot of people that do prints out there that know a lot more than me. I'm more of an enthusiast. I do prop work and stuff. And sometimes I use 3D printing in my work. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just print a lot of stuff because it's fun to it's fun to do 3D prints. So, so don't don't think this is like a super uh, in depth review. It's more just, hey, this is this machine, this is what it can do, this is what I think of it. So, here we go. Here's the A10M. One of the first things you'll notice about it is it's dual extrusion. Um, but the unique thing, I suppose, is that it only has one print nozzle right there. So it's feeding two filaments into one nozzle and that is controlled by either the actual control here, which you can do some changes there, or it's controlled in whatever slicer software that you're using. Also, you'll probably notice that I don't have uh, spools of filament connected to it right now. One of the first things that I realized about this machine was I didn't like the way the filament uh, holders connected to it. I felt like it was weird and it intended to bind up these filament sensors when the uh, filament was looping back around into there. And so from some scrap things I had around my shop, I created this double filament holder. So I've been using that. Technically these are supposed to hook onto here and it's all supposed to work together. But like I said, I felt like it was too tight of angles and it seems like that stuff was jamming quite a bit. So once I switched to this, I stopped having that problem. Out of the box, overall setup on this machine was fairly quick. I think it took like maybe 15 minutes. Mostly all of the machine was put together. The build plate was already in place. I think I had to just connect the gantry area into the base and set up the little computer control area. Once I was able to put it all together, I was able to run one of the stock models that it came with. And that model was this cool little gecko. And as you can see, it is dual filament and it looks pretty cool. And overall, you know, just straight from the box, a pre-programmed file, I thought this print turned out really great. And you're probably wondering, okay, so how does that work with the, uh, the dual extrusion? and the color changes. So what, what it does is between colors, the machine will retract, print off on this little cube. Of course, it's not a cube when it begins, it's just a little layer basically, until it runs the color out into the, and then it'll start with the next color and then it'll go back and print that color and then it'll go back and run the, that color out and it'll go back and print the next color and just back and forth, back and forth until you get this cool dual extruded model. For me, this isn't necessarily something I have to have, the dual extrusion, because most of the things I make get sanded and painted anyway. But if you're into leaving the 3D prints raw, the dual extrusion is really cool. And like I said, you can use slicer software depending on the slicer. I use Simplify 3D and this is my logo. And I set this one up in order to do the dual color here. And you can see you can print some pretty cool stuff with dual color. Print bed size is 220 by 220 by 260 going up. For the idea of what a larger print looks like here is Godzilla. I printed this uh, fairly large. It, it could have been printed a little bit bigger to max out the size of the printer. But as you can see, it picked up all the nice uh, fine detail in Godzilla's skin, even his teeth. And this is just cheap generic PLA. It's not special PLA whatsoever. And the printer printed it really well. So overall, I've been very, very impressed with the out of the box performance. Now, some of this has to do with the fact that I use Simplify 3D. So one of the cons I will say though, is the fans in it are, are fairly loud. So here, let's get an idea of what that sounds like. You know, I mean, it's not terrible. I've heard louder fans, but um, it definitely can make some noise. And that's before it's running with everything else. 
I did purchase a $20 Wi-Fi dongle that GTEC makes. This was off Amazon. And it allows me to be able to control most most of the basic settings from here. Instead of using the stupid scroll wheel, which I hate these interfaces personally, but I was able to use this to control it with my wireless device. So normally I control this from my phone, but I'm using my phone to record this. So um, I'm showing this app on my iPad. Um, it's kind of silly, comically large because it's on the iPad and it's not an iPad app. But here you can see where it gives you the readout of what's going on with the printer. You can go into the temperature. Um, if I want to get this, this baby heated up, I can just put in like 210. Ah, here we go, 210, done. Bed at 70, which is usually where I print most PLA, done. And you can look over here and see that those numbers have an input here, which is super handy. And you can kind of keep an idea on your print as you go along with all these different options they have here. And you can see the readout here as this thing's heating up. So I haven't showed it printing yet because I haven't really wanted it uh, going in the background while I'm filming this, but we'll get this heated up and start printing something so you can see it printing. So we're fully heated up. I was uh, setting up the filament while the heat was going on. I didn't time it, but one of the pros about this machine is it heats up quick. It's, it's really fast to heat up probably because of the size of it. It's not super huge. Another thing that I really like about it is this super plate it has this fine texture on it. PLA sticks really well to it. I've only printed PLA on this machine and it sticks really well, but it also comes off super easy. So popping things off has been great. Adhesion is oftentimes a lot of people's problem. Uh, that's been great, so I can't complain about that. And as I said before, you can control the mix of the two different PLAs right here. So depending on what you want, you can print 100% one, 100% the other. You can mix the two together if you want to manually control it. I'm going to go ahead and start the, uh, the standard lizard that came with it, because I think that's a cool model. And I'll just show you what that's like. Here's the finished model. It's already been released. I accidentally knocked it off, so I can't show you how easy it releases. It's got a little bit of stringing. That's probably because I was running it too hot. As you can see, it printed really well. So the green on the one I just printed was actually running at 50-50 between the blue and the green filament. So it made this kind of teal color while the blue is just the standard blue like it is here. So that's why this one looks teal and this one looks green because that green was actually 50-50 and this was the 100% blue. So that's why these two look a slightly different. So you can see how you get some good color combinations with the mixture too. So I think this one had that stringing as well and I cleaned it up. So give you an idea of, you know, just a little bit of cleanup and not that big of a deal. So that's pretty much it. There's one other thing I do have to mention. Not that long after I started using this printer, the power supply died. I didn't know it was a power supply right away. I contacted them. They had me run some diagnostic things. We determined it was the power supply. They sent me a new one, like two day air. So I got it quickly. It was a really good interaction. But I do have to say, I don't know specifically if I was dealing with the marketing team or with customer service. So if you have to have a similar thing, I have no idea how that experience is going to turn out for you. I can just say for myself, dealing with GTEC has been great. They were very responsive. And like I said, they sent me a part out as soon as they could. And I got the machine up and running again. Overall, it's a pretty great little machine for the size and price. There is a non-dual filament version of it, which is $100 less. I think you can pick it up for like 200 bucks. So if you're looking for an inexpensive FDM type machine, uh, I don't see how you can really go wrong with it for a couple hundred dollars. Just like all these inexpensive machines, they have their, they have their tweaks and they have their things. And I don't know if they're necessarily the best machines for people that have never done 3D printing before, but if you have a little bit of experience, you need a good printer that's gonna give you good quality. I don't really see how you can go wrong with this one. That's it for me and thanks for watching and hopefully you found this um, helpful. See you next time.